All right, so now, uh, let's say my retention, you know, is, is not as good as I want it to be. Let's just say I'm not in a mood to really work on retaining my guard and I allow my partner to pass. And as middle-aged practitioners, this, this is a game plan. Some days it's just to survive, make it through. You know, I, I equate, you know, it's like a hill, right? When, when we're younger and we're newer, and if we start younger, we're, we're working our way up, you know, and we're, we're at the bottom of the hill. And then we get to that point to where we're in our physical prime and our technical prime and we're on top of the hill. And now we still have our technique, but physically we start coming back down and we're, we're, we're kind of hanging on as, as we're falling down the hill, you know. And when that happens, like some days when I train now, it's not about winning every single round. It's about making it through every single round. And it's about getting a workout. It's about getting a sweat. It's about going home learning. And even though you're allowing someone to pass your guard, you're still looking to defend and you're still making them work. You know, I remember up until like a year ago, one of my main competitors, you know, I would let him attack me for the first two minutes and take my back and go for one thing out of the, after the next. And, you know, my defense is very good. So when he threw everything that he had at me and he couldn't submit me, mentally that would defeat him. And then it was my time to start working. Then it was my time to start breaking him down. But if I came out of the gates looking to match his tenacity, his speed, his strength, not his technique, but his, his physicality, it would be very hard for me to match that in every sense. You know, to, so to allow him to get position on me and to slow things down, it made things much easier for me, okay? So now we do get our guard passed and we're in side control. So there's a few things we need to understand. Uh, let's say Shane is in side control on me. Stay this way. What I want to think about is my hands want to stay on my body and I don't want him to get underneath my arms and his armpits in my and his knees in my armpits because if that happens you're very you're stretched out you know you're able to get locked up uh, this is not the best position for you to be in there is a time when it's just too late all right so the best defense is not to get put in those positions so if you get past my arms are on me and and for me personally I do rather my opponent to mount than to stay in side control. Because side control becomes very hard, but you have to understand and your partner's movement is gonna be your escape. So if they just stay here, it's very hard to move. Don't waste time exploding into your partner, trying to get the knee in. Like it's just, it's a waste, right? Start moving on their move. So one thing we could do is kind of poke into our partner and turn our back just a little bit. Because this is gonna be one of those times where your partner thinks they have back. All right, so he, if he starts attacking the back in this position, understanding when he steps that one leg over, all right, as he goes to pull you into him, your back must stay flat on the mat. And this is a perfect time to recover a half guard, okay? Stay, keep it. From here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the foot in between my legs. I do this often, I, I, I do this a lot. All right, now I make sure this leg doesn't throw over my head. The only problem that I have here is his arm is caught, okay? So be careful and understand that in order for him to get the back, this leg that is caught on him has to come in and get the hook, all right? If he doesn't get the hook, he doesn't have the back. If he pulls you into him, all right, watch this hook, but also watch getting caught in this position here. So I do suggest if your partner goes to pull you into them, all right, is to keep your back flat on the mat for as long as you could. If he brings the hand over the head, you're still okay. You're just one step closer to where you need to be, okay? From this position, you're keeping this locked and you're escaping your hips just a little bit into your partner, okay? Notice I'm not even locking my hands right now because the leverage he has is nothing. He doesn't have anything. I'll hold on to my gi, but for him to arm lock me now is very hard because I'm controlling this knee. And when I tell you I do this often, I, I do this often. All right, from this position, now I'll start turning into my partner, understanding that he has not much on me because the hook is not able to come in because the angle of my body is torqued in a position to where he can't be belly, he can't have his belly button to my back. In order for him to have both hooks in, he has, he has to have belly button in the back. If he does it, to get this hook in is very, very hard. Don't be silly and bring your arm back and get your arm caught. OK, 
okay? You're just gonna stay in this position, work on from here, you could go back to close guard, okay? Go back to close guard, you can come to your knees in this position, but if you go back to close guard, all right, what I would do is I would turn this way, keeping this leg up and stepping this leg up, turning into my partner. Okay, that's one thing that we can look to do. Another thing we can look to do from this position, all right, one of my best escapes from side control is to get this hand to this position, but with the gi, it's very hard to do, all right, because you kind of get stuck and you don't want to get caught underneath your partner, reversing under your partner. It's kind of a, you'll get the gi bird on your face and, and it's not the most comfortable thing. But a great way to avoid the gi bird on your face is if this arm does get here, okay, is cross collar grip on your partner and start straightening your arm. As you straighten your arm, you're pulling yourself underneath your partner, keeping this here. From here, there's gonna be a choke that you have immediately, okay? All I do is I tighten and I get it. We see people look uh, for these chokes immediately. You know, they let you pass when they have the cross collar choke, but from here we're gonna get it after we set it up. So my arm is to the inside and it's just something sneaky for us to do, okay? From here, oftentimes your partner will see this arm and he'll start trying to walk around for the arm lock immediately. When he does, you're spinning yourself through. You're making a grip and you're finishing the choke. Now, if you don't feel comfortable finishing the choke and you just want to recover guard, escape your hips and get back in the guard. Once you get back in the guard, pull your partner in, keep them close to you. Again. Don't just turn your back aimlessly. You know, if you just turn your back, you're gonna get your back taken, okay? But if you poke your back up and your partner thinks they can take it, remember, we're defending the strangle. Partner steps over, he goes to pull you in. Back stays heavy. Heavy, 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 all right? I don't want this to, I don't want this leg to get thrown over me, okay? From here, I pull my hips out I'm in this position here, okay? Now, if I could bring this leg over, do so. There's no hooks to be had right now. Even if you rolled me over and he rolled me through in this position, you're gonna be able to roll out oftentimes. Main, things, main thing is when you're in side control, stop bench pressing your partner off you. Stop expending energy. Just relax, stay here. You know, your partner could you know, do whatever they want, really. I don't really care. And if he goes to mount, that's the perfect time where you recover. Remember, if they go to mount, if they go to step over, you're following the foot with your foot. Look what I'm doing there. I'm not letting him mount and then I'm not knee elbow escaping, so go mount. If he mounts and I knee elbow escape, it's too late. But as he goes to mount, if I follow the foot, now I have it immediately. All right, so you're timing it. A big mistake that people make from here, if they're in quarter mount, is to pull their arm out and underhook. You don't have the half guard from here. This arm doesn't want to come here. This arm wants to stay here, bump your partner up, get to the deep half guard. And this is the same basically position that I was in before when he was looking to take my back. And oftentimes you're gonna think they have your back from here. So as he rolls to take your back, you follow, 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 getting on top of your partner. Notice many things I'm doing is, is playing with leverage, playing with their head above my head, and just taking my time, relaxing, not panicking, understanding if they pass, it's not the end of the world, making space and then taking up space. Give it a try. <laughs> 